Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you by faith, uh, saved by grace through the faith uh, that we have in Jesus Christ. And as we walk, he teaches us how to pray, he teaches us how to walk in faith. And that's why we're in the sixth petition. Sixth petition, it sounds pretty uh, in depth, uh, being able to walk in this Lord's Prayer. But as we get to have it here, sixth petition um, is something that uh, we are pleading, desiring, and asking God. We are asking God to be able to help us, asking God to be able to put us into the right space, place, and being able to actually walk forward in his faithfulness to us. And that's why the sixth petition is none other than, and lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. And so as we have this, as Martin Luther was uh, mulling over this, as he put these in the petitions, as uh, what uh, we should teach our children within the household, um, as what the small catechism is all about, uh, but being able to actually walk forth together in faith, he put this explanation in this way. It says, and lead us not into temptation. What does this mean? God tempts no one. We pray in this petition that God would guard and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our sinful nature may not deceive us or mislead us into false belief, despair, and other great shame and vice. Although we are attacked by these things, we pray that we may finally overcome them and win the victory. I just want to uh, really get into detail on that last part there. Um, being this, although we are attacked by, the, by all these things, meaning uh, false belief, despair, and other great shame and vice, we pray that we will finally that we may finally overcome them and i just want to give that sense of hope there that we may finally overcome them the meaning that there is a route there is a position there is a direction to overcome them and it is something that we can declare victory over them and i know you know the answer but i'm just gonna give it to you pretty simple and it's this in jesus we overcome in jesus we have the victory and so while we talk about and lead us not into temptation, God does not tempt. But there is over and over again throughout the scriptures, there is time where God does test. He tests his people. He, he tests the faithfulness to draw them closer to him. And this is what Martin Luther went on and he gave us a couple points. He says, uh, why do tempt and temptation, what do they mean in and amongst the scriptures? When it comes according to God, it's more of that word of test. And so listen to this. In the scriptures, these words have two meanings. One, the testing of our faith, which God uses to bring us closer to himself. Right? James picks this up in James chapter 1. He says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And Paul picks that up in Romans, right? And he says, uh, your suffering produces perseverance. Your perseverance produces character. Your character produces hope. And so within this testing, it draws us close to God. That's number one. Number two, the Lord tested, uh, sorry, uh, the attempts of our spiritual enemies to lure us away from God and his ways. That's number two, right? Of being able to say, what do tempt and temptation mean? Well, it is the attempts of our spiritual enemies to lure us away from God and his ways ways. And I love this one, James, because he kind of picks it up after he talks about pure joy, that if you have suffering, it develops perseverance. But then just later verses in chapter one of James, it says, when tempted, no one should say, God has tempted me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. And so within this reality, we have the sense of temptation, testing, testing by God to draw us closer to him, but tempting by others to draw us away from him. And so what a battle we are in. That's why it's a great petition of being able to say, lead us not into temptation. It's a fierce battle. So into what kinds of evil do our spiritual enemies try to mislead us? We got to have this understanding. We have to have our eyes open, right? It says the devil, the world, and our sinful na nature try to mislead us into false belief that we actually go outside of scriptures and, and walk according to the truth in some other manner, right? Despair, meaning that we're on our own, kind of that we are in this despair, we're in this isolation of being able, we have to figure it out on our own. He does this incredibly well in our society. The devil, the world, and our sinful nature love to be able to say, it's all on you. 
when our eyes should be fixed on Jesus. And he says, I am with you. So despair is something that the evil ones, the, 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 our enemies, our spiritual enemies, try to speak to us and be able to say, no one's going to understand. No one's going to help. you got to figure this out on your own. And that brings us in to despair. And that is actually a false belief. So you should hear this truth. God is always with you. And the church, I believe, <laughs> stands ready that we can walk. We might not do it in perfection, but we'll walk together in that way. But, and also it says this, and other great sins. And you can just know what your weakness is. And he's going to tempt you in that. He's going to probably exploit you in that. The devil, the world, and our sinful nature always continue to entice us and being able to lure us into the sins and the weaknesses um, that are so good for us in a short season. So we think. That's our sinful nature. Thinking that it's good for us. But sin always leads to death. So what are we actually asking for God to do when we pray in this petition? Here it is. We ask our Father in heaven to give us strength to resist and overcome temptations. We ask our Father in heaven, who is hallowed and set apart, and his kingdom's coming, his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He's going to provide for us our daily bread. He's going to continue, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> uh, he's going to give us what we need in this daily life. He's going to, as I'm looking at that, he's going to forgive us and have our greatest need in that kind of way. But he's also going to lead us. Lead us in the path of righteousness. Lead us in the path of truth rather than the path of the, of our, of the devil, of our sin, of our world. And so we ask our Heavenly Father to give us strength to resist and overcome temptations. I just want to lay that before you again. If we're asking to resist and overcome, there is a sense and there is a hope, a sure hope that we can because God is all-powerful and he is way more powerful than our sin, than our temptations, than our, than our world, than the evil one. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 says this, If you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. How beautiful those words are being able to say, hey, he's not saying that you're not going to get tempted, that you're not going to have suffering, that you're not going to have uh, some testing. No, actually, the, the reality is we're going to have all of those. But we pray in this petition that he will give us strength to resist and overcome our temptations. God is faithful. <laughs> a lot of people take this verse and be able to say, he's not going to give me more than I can bear. But I put a little bit different of a twist on it than that. He's probably going to test you more than what you can bear so that you just fully rely on him. May our eyes ever just be fixed on God, who is always with us. May our eyes be ever fixed on his victory in Jesus on the cross, through the grave. May we understand, may we celebrate the power of the Holy Spirit that's living in us rather than walking in the desires of our flesh, of our sinful nature. And we, with having Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in us and through us and on our side, we can resist and we will overcome. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day.